Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, good morning and welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes of Flame. What's happening out there? Welcome to the new astrological year, the astrological new year, day one, as we celebrate the return of light and heat to the Northern Hemisphere. And this year's observance of the autumnal, I'm sorry, the uh, spring equinox is uh, really quite something because unless you're living under a rock and haven't found this out yet, uh, David Rockefeller passed away. He left his body. Now, where he went, one can only imagine. Did he usurp the body of somebody else in the realm of body snatching? Did he enter into a younger being? Was there some kind of soul transformation? Who knows what goes on, really, in the, in the wee hours of their passing? Who knows what high priests or priestesses or even perhaps some form of AI that has been developed so that David Rockefeller's consciousness could be transferred directly into some non-organic source of information and code. We don't know. But what we do know is that the corporeal being, who lasted 101 years, and had been rumored to have seven heart transplants. Seven heart transplants. The latest one lasting this last year for one year. Now, I cannot confirm the rumor, but there's the rumor out there. He had seven heart transplants. Uh, really, most people can only handle two. But David Rockefeller was not most people. He lived to be 101. He started his time on Earth in the year 1916. Let's check out his Wikipedia. Let's get into his birth date here. Let's go a little David Rockefeller action. Let's see what we have here. David Rockefeller, dead. Dead, dead, dead. We're going to talk about the significance. 1915, he was born on June 12th, 1915. He was already 101. He would have been 102 had he lasted a mere three more months. He uh, is succeeded here by Richard Rockefeller, David Rockefeller Jr. Who else? We got to look at the more. All right, Richard Rockefeller, David Rockefeller Jr. Nancy Goodwin, who is a daughter, Peggy Dulaney, a daughter, Ellen Rockefeller, daughter, and Abby Rockefeller. So now the Rockefeller fortune, I believe, falls to David Jr., who, who I think is the oldest of the Rockefellers. Now, he was born on July 24th. 1941, an American sailor, philanthropist, and an active participant in nonprofit environment. They always do that. So he is the next in line of the Rockefellers. Now, what's interesting about old man Rockefeller is that he was a Gemini. So he was a great dabbler in duality. And he saw the world in very different terms than the rest of us. And in fact, he is the classic version or example of the predatory globalist. His dream above all other dreams was to shepherd 
humanity into a one world government, into a new world order. This, this was always his goal. And everything around the Rockefeller, the Rockefeller Foundation, and their quote-unquote philanthropic trusts, they're all aligned towards bringing us into a one-world government. Now, if you go back in, uh, in time, uh, you'll see that there are links to the Rockefellers and concepts like feminism. Nicholas Rockefeller talked about feminism to Aaron Russo in uh, Russo's documentary From Freedom to Fascism. He and Nicholas Rockefeller had become friends. And Nicholas Rockefeller said, well, we gave the world feminism. Well, the Rockefellers in connection with the CIA did. And Russo asked, well, why? He said, well, first of all, we got the kids out of the house sooner. And we got to them sooner. We got to them. We got to their heads sooner in schools. And public, I believe the public school system, as we know, was also started by the Rockefellers. So they've been incredibly involved in managing our consciousness, directing our signal. The other thing he said, Nicholas Rockefeller, he said, well, not only do we get the kids sooner, we get the moms out of the home, we get to destabilize the home. And we get more tax dollars because now we've got two parents that are working versus one parent. So there's more taxable income. So feminism, according to Nicholas Rockefeller, was and this, I believe Nicholas Rockefeller was Nelson Rockefeller's son, who is the brother of David Rockefeller. And of course, Nelson Rockefeller a.k.a. Rocky, was really president of the United States for about two years. This was the only way that a Rockefeller could be, a, be, be, be sitting in the Oval Office because most people did not trust them. They didn't want an oligarch in the White House. Fast forward to Trump, and Trump is about as close as he gets to being an American oligarch sitting in the White House. Times have changed especially on the heels of somebody like Barack Obama. People are willing to accept kind of an oligarchical status as long as he's got the vocabulary and the delivery to connect with the masses, which Trump has clearly done again and again and again. It's probably his greatest gift is connecting with the masses. Nelson Rockefeller ran the country for two years. If you go back in time and look at what happened with Nixon and Spiro Agnew, the first thing to do was to get Spiro Agnew out of the White House, and they found corruption charges. Look, it's easy to find corruption charges on any politician. They're all corrupt to some degree. So once they got Spiro Agnew out, in came Gerald Ford, and Gerald Ford's appointment as vice president took place because of his tacit agreement, understanding and exceptional work as part of the Warren Commission. Of course, the Warren Commission was the commission, the uh, kangaroo court that was set up to basically whitewash the JFK assassination. So Gerald Ford knew where all the bodies were buried. And of course, we've gone over where Gerald Ford, uh, what his what is MO is and was through the... Confessions of Kathy O'Brien, and Gerald Ford was one of her first violators in the state of Michigan. And a major handler, Gerald Ford, whose real name was Leslie King. And Gerald Ford came in as vice president, and once he was in as vice president, Nixon's days were numbered. And sure enough, Nixon was shot out of a cannon from Washington, D.C. because of Watergate and wiretapping. And look at where we are now. I mean, the whole thing just sounds, you know, in retrospect, what Nixon was doing is so juvenile. It was like on cassette tapes and it was, or reel-to-reel tapes. It was just so juvenile, so infantile, yeah, so, so, so primitive. And here we are now with this massive state surveillance with the NSA and CIA and all the deep state 
connivances to get into our lives, and not just our lives, but public officials. It's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It is the seven billion strong conversation that never ends and is always recorded. Even as now, as I speak, it's being recorded somewhere. The Akashic records of the earth are really inside the vaults of the NSA. And I'm not talking about the Akashic records of the cosmic sort, but of the here and now. So once Nixon was shot out of a cannon, Gerald Ford ascended to the presidency for two years. He was a joke. Everybody made fun of him. Sarah Jane Moore tried to kill him. And, of course, who did he, who did he tab? He tabbed the, the uh, former governor of the state of New York, Nelson Rockefeller, as 